A fourth parole hearing takes place today for a former professional skateboarder from Carlsbad. Mark Gator Rogowski is currently serving 31 years to life for the murder of Jessica Bergston. District Attorney Summer Stephan joins us now to talk about today's parole hearing. Good morning, District Attorney. Good morning, Lauren. Thanks for having me. Well, for people who have have been around uh, San Diego for some time, they might remember uh, Mark Rogowski, better known as Gator, the professional skateboarder uh, from the 1980s, uh, and the horrific rape and murder that took place of Jessica Bergston. And, uh, you know, this is a fourth parole hearing, and I understand he was actually granted parole in 2019, but then it was reversed. That's right, and we are going to fight it out again this morning at 1030. Um, it's very important. This is one of those callous, heartless, cruel uh, crimes, and we just don't believe that, uh, that he should be released. He poses a risk to the community, especially to women. Uh, and vulnerable women. Jessica was 22. Um, she wasn't just murdered. She was murdered in a terrible, cruel way. She was suffocated, she was beaten, and she was raped. Uh, and so this is an especially heinous crime, and this is why we are opposing parole. We don't believe that he's been rehabilitated. Um, what happens is that they look at his history while in prison. While in prison, there are not vulnerable women. So that is not really a conclusive test for us. It is whether he's ready for release out in the public where there are people uh, that need protection. You know, in granting of his parole in, I think it was December of 2019, and then it being reversed uh, in, what, uh, a few months later, four months later, April of 2020, I believe, was he out during that period, or was, was it set to happen, and then it was stopped before he could be released? Yeah, good question, Lauren. No, there's a, there's a process by which after the parole board grants parole, there's a time period where we can appeal to the governor and uh, show all the reasons through the record and the transcript why this parole grant was not wise and not within the, uh, the, the way the law works in terms of paroling people that are really ready uh, to be safe in the public. Um, and the governor did grant our request. And the, the hard thing is that these things are coming up every year. So when the family and friends can barely take their breath and feel that um, their loved one, there's still justice for her when we're beginning to fight it again. And this is why we have a specialized unit, which unfortunately other DA's offices have abandoned that stand with the families. We make the legal arguments. So the voice of our community and the voice of the victims is heard in those parole hearings. And is this a case that people can weigh in on? You know, people can write letters, but um, really that the way the law works, it, it is more focused on the impact on victims, which are the family members, and also on the four corners of the law, whether the person poses a, a high risk of uh, not being safe out there, of committing violent crime. And what often the parole board relies on is they almost abandon the idea of looking at what this person did, and instead they look at what have they been doing in prison. Well, prison is an artificial environment where there are no vulnerable victims. And when I look at cases where someone um, rapes a human being and murders them uh, cruelly and callously. And I'm not going to go through the details for your viewers early this morning, but it's, it's quite, quite vicious. Um, I don't think that person can change. That, that is just such a departure of what humanity looks like. It isn't like in a heat of a moment, um, somebody pushes someone or punches someone and they die. 
those cases when they come up for parole have a completely different analysis by our office. Right. But a case like this that is methodical and heinous and vicious, uh, we just don't believe the release is appropriate. Well, we're grateful that your office uh, is still uh, ha has that team dedicated to speaking up for victims, victims' families, um, and looking at these cl cases very closely. Summer Stefan, thank you so much. Appreciate it as always.